We are four days into the new year, but 2020 is still kind of hovering around like a gray cloud. Even the glass city didn't escape the stresses of last year, but we're looking forward. Toledo Mayor Wade Capscavage joins us this morning. New year, new attitude for Toledo Mayor, right? Well, I'm always optimistic, so uh, there won't be a new attitude for me because I, I always uh, think our best days are ahead. But I suppose to paraphrase the Beatles, you have to believe it's getting better because I can't get no worse. Uh, <laughs> I last think year everybody was is still kind of top of mind with the pandemic, right? And um, is still hoping that we can get through this. So what are your hopes for maybe vaccinations and, and helping to get the city back in, in good footing? Well, the first vaccinations have made their way uh, into our city, and some people have started to receive them. They're frontline workers. Now the challenge is to make sure that the public at large can be vaccinated because we know that is uh, the recipe for getting back to normal. And I think if we can do this, if we can get to 70% of our community vaccinated, I'm one who believes that by midsummer, just to throw a date out, 4th of July, I think we could be, quote, back to normal. Uh, and that means no masks, no social distancing, you know, go to a, the go a golf tournament, the Solheim Cup, the Jamie Farr, the Mud Hens, a concert, do whatever you want. We can do that uh, if we can get folks uh, vaccinated uh, here in real time, and we're working to do that. Yeah, 70% is, is kind of a high number, especially with some of the numbers that we've been hearing coming in so far about vaccinations and the folks who are willing to take it. Uh, what is the city gonna do to get the word out uh, about the importance of getting that, that vaccine? Well, we have formed a committee that we believe is the first of its kind, certainly in Ohio and among uh, the first in the nation. It is a group of almost 200 uh, businesses, uh, community organizations, faith organizations uh, that is going to uh, provide positive encouragement uh, for taking the vaccine. In other words, we talk about the carrot and the stick. Uh, I think folks are tired of the stick. Um, but we can incentivize people to do what we know works, which is take the vaccine. So, you know what, I'll be honest, Maybe people uh, won't do it if the government tells them to do it. But what this initiative is all about is to try to see, well, maybe they'd be more likely to do it if their pastor encourages them or their coworker or the principal of their child's school. That's why we have so many different organizations, non-governmental, uh, the big businesses, small businesses, the, the diocese, churches, schools, uh, social service agencies really working toward providing positive incentives and encouragement to do what we know works. And we think we can get to 70%. The, number, the percentages we're seeing uh, of people likely to, to take this um, is pretty close that we think with an extra boost, boost we can get there. A full community uh, effort here to, to get this accomplished. So we could go to a baseball game. We could go to a golf tournament. We all want to do that this summer. Looking forward to that. Uh, let's also talk about uh, last year a little bit. Uh, we saw a lot of violence in Toledo last year. And, and manpower, we, we've heard, you know, we've got some retirements and, and, and so forth. What, what is the city working on to make Toledo a safer place to live? Violence uh, was too high in Toledo last year. Um, it was too high everywhere. One of the realities of the pandemic is that uh, every big city in Ohio and virtually every big city in this country saw a rise in especially violent crime. And, and to the extent that maybe this was due to a national trend, you know, maybe it explains why it happened, but it doesn't make us feel any better. We know that having an adequate number of police is part of the solution. It's not the whole solution, but it's an important part. My commitment when I ran for mayor several years ago was to increase the size of the police force, and we've been doing that. When I became office uh, mayor, there were 600 officers on the street. Uh, today, there's about 630. Doesn't seem like much of an increase, but that number had been declining for 12 straight years. Uh, this year, we're going to be bringing on a 50-member fire class, which is a different part of public safety, but also a 31-member police class. So we are committed to keeping our numbers strong, even as we continue to build a social network necessary to hopefully avoid crime before it begins. So we're doing both. Okay, well, let's, let's end on a positive note here. Roads. <laughs> right. We had the income tax uh, pass uh, back in November, and I think a lot of people are looking forward to getting those bumps out of the roads of their drive. Talk a little bit what, what the plans are for. 
You know, it was a tough year last year, like everyone knows. But at the end of the year, uh, Toledoans did something that I think sends an important signal. They approved the levies to both uh, build a $200 million state-of-the-art uh, metro park along the Maumee River in downtown and a levy to fix their roads. And citizens just wouldn't do that. They, they wouldn't uh, make those decisions unless they believed in the future of their city, unless they, like me, felt that our best days were ahead. I think that's an encouraging sign, and it speaks to the optimism and resilience that Toledoans have. So on the topic of roads, uh, we're going to get the job done. The citizens want us to fix them. We're going to fix them. And so for the first time now, we have a dedicated uh, resource to spend on only roads. And so this year, you will see five times the amount of residential road resurfacing than we do in a normal year. And you'll see the same thing next year and the year after and the year after, because this levy provides a guaranteed 18, million, 18 to $19 million revenue stream to only do roads. It's legally, that's the only thing we can spend it on. And so you will see five times the amount of road repair and, and resurfacing throughout our city. That's what the citizens voted for, and that's what they're going to see next year. So that is something I think mm -hmm. we will all be excited uh, yeah. to sell. Is there a place where residents can go to kind of track that progress on the roads? Uh, we are developing a website. It's not up yet, but we will. We're working uh, to develop that so that as soon as the weather breaks, uh, you're going to see uh, roads being fixed. So, you know, here on January 4th, uh, we're not in a position to uh, do any resurfacing. And so this website that we're talking about is, isn't ready. But by by springtime, uh, we're, we're ready to go. And so that will be a part of the accountability and transparency we want to promote through this project. Wonderful, Mayor. Thank you so much for making time for us this morning. And we wish the best here in 2021. Thank you. Yep, take care.